But uh, the purpose of tonight's show, uh, not just uh, to find out what Lance has been up to, but kind of like how we did with Mickey Jones. We're going to take a look at some of the music that inspired Lance to become a composer or get involved with music. And uh, whether it's stuff that he picks out or whether it's stuff I pick out to play, it's totally up to, I guess, we're in control. So That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the first thing, the first thing, you know, who, you know, how how were you inspired to do? I think I asked you when we did the interview, but it's been a long time. It's been since last October. So, what inspired you to be a uh, movie composer or scorer? I think a lot of it, in all honesty, is the absolute love just for that style of music. You know, I can clearly remember as a very young kid um, having things like. Um, the soundtrack record from Jaws. You know, obviously, um, my dad had a part in Jaws when he doubled Richard Dreyfus down in the cage, and in which case, when I was, uh, I think I was six years old, when he took me to the set and I saw the shark, I've got one of the teeth. So there was, maybe it was part of the association with, you know, my father in that particular film, but I was always kind of notorious for having things like soundtrack records or KISS records. That's there you it. go. <laughs> and, of course, you know, then I developed the love for drums, and it kind of took off musically from there. My dad sings, plays very little guitar, but really nobody else in my family, um, you know, other than being appreciations, they absolutely love music. Okay. You know, my brother, my sister, my mom, I remember growing up with, with always music around me, but I was the one who kind of picked out more of the soundtrack. And I, I don't know if it was more just because it was instrumental, so no vocal, and the fact of in the soundtrack really, you know, one of the things that I think of really strongly is you're creating a mood. And I think that if you can put on a record or a CD and recapture that feeling, that composer was extremely successful. Yeah. And that's what I just absolutely love. And, you know, years later when I ended up doing my little thing as the boombox boy on Halloween 2 and had met John Carpenter and everybody, his assistant, after we had done, we were done shooting, gave me every soundtrack record, now I'd just love to say that, yeah. up to that point in John's career, she gave me all of them as a gift. Wow. And so there was another huge burst of inspiration. I still say a lot of it came from that that vibe Carpenter made me feel. I was so close to, you know, I guess in an odd way, his movies, being that, you know, with my dad and myself, and then my brother, of course, had a small part in Halloween, too. I mean, all three of us were in that. And then... My dad was, you know, pretty major lead as one of the assassins in Halloween 3, as well as I did a little doubling one of the assassins. And I had been to the set, went to the set of the thing to see my dad and John. Didn't make it to the set of Escape from New York when they did that one because they were too far east. But it was always playing into John Carpenter and my dad and his films and then his music. And so I think I just instantly kind of like developed a feeling and a friendship for John even though I was 13, 14 years old but I still buy his CDs as they come out. Oh heck yeah, and John Carpenter, he, you know, he, he's he been around for quite a while, huh? Come on. He's been around for a while and that's no slam on his age that guy came out and just hit it big and never looked back and he was one of those composers that I mean he was a film director but yet he did his own music and then he would also usually write his own scripts so he had so much control that it was so neat to see how he put it all together and made these great films oh yeah and and, and uh, we're gonna play a theme uh, it was one of his later films that he did, or I don't even know. See, I don't know a whole lot about the guy. That's why I'm intrigued to learn about him from you. Uh, he did a movie called The Fog. Yes. And uh, we're going to play, well, well uh, Lance can share a little story about that movie if he, from what he remembers of it. Uh, but we're going to play the uh, theme song to The Fog. Excellent choice, I have to say. Based on John Carpenter. 
But uh, obviously you have some stories to tell from, from the movie, because I've never seen it. The Fog was one that was actually done in between, I believe it was Halloween and Halloween 2. And so the weird thing was, was my dad did not get involved with with John until Escape from New York. Okay. And so the fog had actually, that one had actually already been done. In fact, I'm looking right here. It was done in 79, which was after the original Halloween and before Halloween 2. But it was also before Escape from New York. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to play that track for you right now. We'll be right back with more of the Frankie Aces show with my special celeb guest, Lance Warlock. We'll be right back. Yeah. 